stupid are you brain-eating zombie bastards? Hey, Chef! Chef! Hey, no! Oh, sorry, children. I thought you were one of them. This is Chef from South Park, voiced by 70s Southern soul music legend Isaac Hayes. Chef was one of the show's main characters for nearly a decade, often serving as a friend and confidant for Stan, Kyle, Cartman, and Kenny, teaching them lessons through a series of increasingly inappropriate songs. After 2006, Isaac Hayes made the extremely controversial decision to quit his role on the show, leaving South Park fans shocked and wondering just what happened that could have caused the actor to quit so abruptly. No, Chef! They filled your head with lies! Can't you see that? Get the hell out of here, children! Before we get into the back and forth of what happened here, you should probably like and subscribe to Nerdstalgic if you haven't done so already. For those of you who may not remember, Chef was a South Park Elementary School cafeteria worker who basically acted as the town's gigolo. He seduced several South Park characters, including Eric Hartman's mother. He fought off hordes of pink eye infected townsfolk, married a succubus, and was sued by Alanis Morissette. Outside of the four principal characters, Chef was one of the biggest characters on the show. In a previous life, Isaac Hayes was a Southern soul superstar. He wrote the song Soul Man in part with David Porter. He also wrote and performed the theme from Shaft. However, during the time period we are discussing, South Park was the largest project that Isaac Hayes was working on at the time. Chocolate Salty Balls, P.S. I Love You, wound up topping the UK and Irish singles chart, and he was nominated for an NAACP Image Award for Best Actor in a Comedy Series. Chef essentially revitalized Isaac Hayes' career, which had been on the downturn since the early 80s. Taking all of this into consideration, it really does seem strange that Isaac Hayes would just up and leave without any notice or warning whatsoever. On November 16, 2005, an episode of South Park titled Trapped in the Closet aired on Comedy Central. Within this episode, which would go on to receive an Emmy nomination for Outstanding Animated Program, there is a description of the core beliefs present in the upper echelons of the Church of Scientology. South Park is notorious for not pulling any punches when it comes to criticizing religion, and they made no exception here. Not only does this episode paint Tom Cruise and John Travolta in an extremely unfavorable light, it also served as one of the first glimpses the general public received into what Scientologists actually believe. We aren't here to slander Scientology or make light of anyone's belief systems. We'll leave that up to Matt Stone and Trey Parker. However, it's no secret that the Church of Scientology can behave in some rather extreme ways when it comes to those who step up to criticize it. There are quite a few members of Scientology actively working in the entertainment industry. Isaac Hayes was one of them. On March 13, 2006, a statement came from representatives of Isaac Hayes stating, There is a place in this world for satire, and there is a time when satire ends and intolerance and bigotry towards religious beliefs of others begins. Religious beliefs are sacred to people and at all times should be respected and honored. As a civil rights activist for the past 40 years, I cannot support a show that disrespects those beliefs and practices. Hayes' representatives further clarified this by stating that he felt the show was inappropriately ridiculing religious communities. Matt Stone fired back and, quite fairly, criticized Hayes, stating that he had no problem cashing checks when South Park made fun of other religions or political figures, and that Hayes was asking for his own religion to be treated differently because of his relationship to the show. One week later, a different statement was made on behalf of Isaac Hayes, stating that he never intended to quit South Park and that someone had quit the show in his stead. Isaac Hayes suffered a stroke, and his father, who is a devout Scientologist, took it upon himself to quit the show for him. The Church of Scientology did not hesitate to act quickly after the episode aired. They had their legal team reach out to Viacom and told them that they would get advertisements pulled from their network if the episode ever went to air again. With this organization being this upset over the content of the episode, it's pretty safe to assume that the practicing members who were working on South Park were pressured to take action as well. All this back and forth ultimately soured the working relationship between Isaac Hayes and South Park creators Matt Stone and Trey Parker. While Isaac Hayes would not return to lend his voice to Chef for one final episode, Parker and Stone did something quite brilliant with Chef's dialogue. In the season 10 episode titled The Return of Chef, they recycled old recordings of Chef's previous dialogue and spliced them together to make Chef seem completely insane. Hello there, children. Hey, Chef. How's it going? Good. Well, how about I meet you boys after work and we can make love? This might seem like a very pointed and targeted attack on Isaac Hayes, but if you really take the time to understand the context of this episode, it seems more like Matt Stone and Trey Parker are reaching out to Isaac Hayes in a very sympathetic way. 
The episode centers around the boys trying their best to save Chef from the Super Adventurers Club. Every line of dialogue spoken to Chef from Stan, Kyle, Cartman, and Kenny feels like the writer's way of reaching out to Hayes and flat out telling him that he's gone off the rails. Chef's shocking dialogue throughout the episode serves as their way of telling the world that there is something wrong with Isaac Hayes, and he is spouting nonsense in the name of the Adventurers Club, which is an analog for the Church of Scientology. As the episode plays out, the children become increasingly confused by Chef's behavior, up until the point where Chef falls down a cliff and dies without ever coming to his senses, which is basically an acknowledgement that Isaac Hayes was too far gone and would inevitably end his career as the seemingly delusioned member of Scientology, despite this episode's somewhat aggressive skewering of Isaac Hayes and Scientology by way of the Super Adventure Club, there is a level of reverence the writers keep for Hayes, specifically at the end of the episode through Kyle's dialogue. I'm gonna remember Chef as the jolly old guy who always broke into song. I'm gonna remember Chef as the guy who gave us advice to live by. Kyle's sentiments feel completely genuine, almost as if the writers are reaching out of the screen and telling it to us directly. These sentiments were echoed in a later interview with Matt Stone and Trey Parker in an interview for The Hollywood Reporter. Matt Stone stated that it sucked to get the full picture because the initial statement made them look like bigots, and Trey Parker said that despite that, they knew in their hearts that there was something else going on. After Isaac Hayes' passing in 2008, South Park dedicated the episode titled The China Problem to his memory. If you look at this entire scenario, it seems like a pretty huge dust-up for a single episode of a cartoon series. However, creating controversial subject matter is something that Matt Stone and Trey Parker could probably write a book on. They took a college animation project made from construction paper and turned it into a self-contained universe serving as a microcosm for current events told through the eyes of 10-year-old children. Regardless of the fallout or repercussions of this episode going to air, the controversy serves as a huge reminder to the power of satire. A function of satirical artists is to criticize the absurdities of political and religious institutions and beliefs. And when they do this well, those religious and political institutions lash out in a variety of ways. Sometimes this can just be calling for boycotts or issuing some inflated criticism on the news. South Park is an equal opportunity offender, and they've been lambasting religion since day one of their bootleg VHS titled The Joy of Christmas. Their entire brand is built off of satirizing and criticizing everyone. And for the most part, they do this in very fair ways. South Park thrives on their ability to draw people in and utilizing satire to make people think about certain controversial topics and spark thoughtful and meaningful conversation. Churches like Scientology thrive on the unwavering and unquestioning support of their members. And when something emerges as a threat to that, they do everything they can to extinguish that threat. So you're not the prophet, huh? You made me look stupid. I'm going to sue you too. Well, fine. Go ahead and sue me. I will! I'll sue you in England! The departure of Isaac Hayes from South Park was controversial, to say the least. Hayes was a part of the show from the very beginning and had definitely cemented himself as a fan-favorite character. However, his inability to allow his religion to be satirized created an impasse between him and Matt Stone and Trey Parker. Good religious satire should be divisive to some degree. In fact, it absolutely needs to be divisive to be effective. Otherwise, it wouldn't be satire at all. Due to its divisive nature, satire can have consequences. These consequences can range and vary from legal challenges and litigation, but more often than not, the biggest consequences of satirization can be on the level of interpersonal relationships. In the case of South Park, the biggest consequence of their satirization of Scientology was the loss of Isaac Hayes as a performer. And that's it for this one, folks. Don't forget to let us know what you think in the comments section below. You might see some links floating in the player window. Feel free to click on those if you'd like to stick around. And thanks for watching Nerdstalgic.